All right, everybody, what's going on? It's Final Fantasy VI Worlds Collide, and we've got an Elixir A Clash for everybody tonight. I am going to be your restreamer and tracker, the Schwanz27. Let me introduce you to the commentary crew for tonight. First up, Goku Black. What's going on, Goku? How are you doing tonight? I'm doing pretty good. Uh, we got a good good uh, race going on here between Strength Blue and uh, Fitz. My, I am joined by my co-commentator, Physics Shebang. How you doing? I'm doing very well, Goku. Thank you very much for asking. Uh, greatly looking forward to... Uh... To this race you know we got a couple of novices here today so i'm looking forward to see if they're able to bring their game today you know yeah for sure uh <laughs> yeah, the sarcasm sure. was laid on thick there wasn't it <laughs> yep <laughs> just a tad <laughs> not for real though we got we got a couple heavy hitters here so i know we're gonna have an amazing race yeah uh definitely um also want to we also want to talk about Ultra League. We you have until after uh, I think I think it's week two to sign up. There's still signups available. Um, these are the um, times that we like up here. We want to uh, for this race if they we want them to beat. You know, it's uh, it's if they want to be at the top. Um, we want them to be. Yeah, so uh, this week's one, race, two, there two, are a few racers from the Elixir A division that have already ran. So shh, don't tell Glue and Fitz this. But they are looking to beat Zenobian's time of 116.52, who coincidentally was our first ranked player in week one. So if Fitz and Glue want to get up some points on that leader, that's the time they have to beat here, Physic. Yeah, and uh, also... If you are new to Worlds Collide, this is a really good spot for you to start. Uh, we also have a Moogle Cup in case you not feeling comfortable being Ultra League and want to have a mentor. That's also a really good option. Uh, Signups are still here. Um, you'll have a mentor, you know, kind of guiding you through, and it's gonna be you're gonna be able to learn a lot easier that way. You know, I. I learned through Kurg, so, you know, and look where I'm at today, so. And I learned through Drinks Glue, so it'll be interesting uh, seeing how he does today, watching my mentor in battle. Yeah, um, there's not a whole lot that's changed between seasons. Um, I think Lore got buffed and the Curse Shield got debuffed, but I think that was about it. Yeah, so the uh, the lores, there are more lores that will show up when it comes up as an ability. Um, it was extremely lackluster in Ultros League 5 with a very high probability that you weren't going to get anything of, uh, of real use uh, when you got it. But it seems to be uh, much more evened out uh, this season. Uh, curse Shield does take more uh, 2D Curse. I believe the minimum is 8 or 9, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but it does take more as a minimum to decurse it. Um, and of course, uh, everybody, everybody knows at this point that the check count for the skip went from 21 to 22, which in my own experience has brought my check or my skip uh, percentage from about 80% down to a, a nice around 50%. So it seems to have uh, had the desired effect, at least for me. Yeah, and uh, we're just uh, waiting here uh, until they start. Uh, you want you want to talk uh, a little bit more about? Uh, you know, what we're doing here. Oh, well, we actually don't need to hop into that at all. We are getting kicked off. Um, okay, looks we like, have uh, Shadow, Goku, and Realm. Realm's a really good character, and it looks like one of the characters that's throw. Ooh, that's really ooh, good. Ooh, yeah, that is spicy. Uh, I wonder if it's a Realm throw. I did miss that, uh, but a throwing Realm with some skeins can just send the seed right off the rails right in the beginning. You just hit the ground running with that. Yeah, uh, for sure. Um... They're and the 32 going... magic go go, yeah, that is a that is a pretty good go go. So they're both going uh, into Narsh, uh, World of Balance. Yeah, not not too big of a spicy play, you know. We're, we're heading to this is heading up to the clock first. Yeah, that is an I... interesting route. Um, I know uh, you know uh, a lot of people start with Narsh because it is a nice fast check, good shops to check. 
Um, you know, you can get a lot of things done just in this small area to get the seed kicked off, um, since looting is your primary objective early Ooh, on there, in your seeds. There was, there was an ice shield in there. Hello. Yes, there was. I mean, I normally go down that up. I think that's a little faster, right? Uh, yeah, I tend to go to the right, go hit the shed. Um, I'll go up, uh, get the clock from the mayor's house, circle around to the armor shop, and down to the item shop. Um, that is uh, actually a route that I found by closely observing Falcon Hits streams. I'm not yeah, sure yeah. if that's still his preferred route, but it was when I was researching. Yeah, um, yeah, you can definitely see minioning is really quick here. That's definitely good. Uh, I did see, we did see white dresses in uh, the arbor shop, so let's... We did, and some enhancers in the weapon shop, which, you know, given that this might be a pretty magic-heavy seed, some enhancers can go a long way, especially with those white dresses. Yeah, for sure, yeah. Uh, enhancer uh, gives us... And earrings trust. and water edges were found as well, according to Schwantz. I apologize that I missed that. Yeah, that's, earrings... That's why I'm the tracker tonight. Aha. <laughs> uh -huh. Aha, yeah. yeah You're doing an amazing why... job. Thank you're you. you're doing double duty, double duty. Uh, so, Serena gown is quite nice as well. Early on, yeah, Rome uh, can use that. And it's pretty good um, for the early game until you get something better. Oh, I hate this NPC. Oh, that is awful. Glue is getting completely blocked. <laughs> oh, that is a disaster. <laughs> we 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 hate to see it. So, Goku, with these three characters, what would be sort of your plan of attack here, given that you have Throw plus Gogo -Go in this seed? Um, I... Honestly, um... I don't think... Um... Uh, doing the, um... Uh... Check for, um... Shadow at the very start would be a bad idea. I also don't think going to Gogo's cave early would be a bad idea either. Um, that's I'm inclined like, to agree. But I mean, especially uh, now that they found those warp stones and returners, right? Yeah. So that makes the zone eater play a little bit more palpable. We'll see what the free check is here, though. I mean, when, when you have a uh, throw and the ability to mimic throwables, um, you can pretty much, you can push the scaling pretty hard in the beginning if you have enough skeins. And there's some fire skeins here uh, at uh, Gao's dad's house. It doesn't look like he's going to pick any up, but they are there if he needs them later. Um, but yeah, throw with high magic and skeins can really push the early game even with higher and scaling. We did manage to get an Esper, uh, Alexander, from that uh, Gao's father's house check. So... That is, depending on what it's got, I think we're gonna do pretty good. Like we already have an Esper, so that's doing. We're doing pretty good so far. Um, Moving right along looks like uh, they're both going to the same places, so no deviation just yet. Um, this is actually kind of my preferred uh, looting path as well. If I don't have any characters that have a, a a stacked amount of chests, you know, if I have a Terra that can go to Sealed Gate. I'll skip right over there. If I have Celis, I'm gonna, you know, maybe skip Narsh or skip Returner's Hideout just to go ahead and do the basement of South Figaro, you know. Um, but considering they don't have any really high treasure count checks to do with their characters, it makes sense that they're gonna go here to South Figaro. I wonder if they're gonna do the basement. Yeah, I definitely do the basement at this point. I would as well. I actually wouldn't. I have, I think they have enough firepower to just go. Right. You are Max, right, actually, with the throwables. Yeah. You have earrings, you have magic power plus gear. Why are we spending three minutes looting a place? Why, why are we Why are we going back here? Is that, <laughs> like a, is that like a shortcut? Yeah, so that is... You go to the that, item shop? Yeah, so that's how you can get from the top to the item shop. So I've seen some runners go through the top route and then underneath to get to the item shop. I just go across the little moat there because i think it's faster but you know it's your personal preference for how you yeah. want to do it realm is chilling here with a uh, smooth 58 magic power on drinks glue side oh, so she will be uh she, she's just a nuclear weapon uh there's a reason why many in the community refer to her affectionately as murder child uh she will be showing the reason that she has that name here shortly and it yeah, looks like glue is making the the trip to Jador, likely to go ahead and do Owser's Mansion. 
which I think is a great check, um, since it does have grind fights that you can do, and even peekable grind fights if you uh, fall into the first chair painting. Uh, that battle will be the battles you'll find in the treasure chests as well, so you can tell if you want to grind that out. So I think this is a good move. Yeah, uh, definitely it's got a good grind fight. The only problem is, is that I'd like to try to do my grind fights, if I can, with something that doesn't have a boss at the end. That's the main thing. But Absolutely, I but there's no avail none available at the moment. Um, and this one at least has a pretty quick exit if things go south and a save point. So I think it's uh, maybe the safest option. Um, Ooh, ninjas. ninjas. Yeah, this is this is sketchy. Ooh, that's probably going to... That might be a reset on glues. No, he has a shield. So he might actually be fine. Let's see. Ooh, now we're it's, uh, yeah, we're uh, maybe. Oh. Is he gonna stick it out? Is he gonna do it? This might kill this pair. Yeah, oh yeah, you got you know sometimes you got to take those risks. Um, and it looks like it's gonna pay off for him. Um, learned ice three. So uh, again, realm is really going to be carrying the early game of the seed. Looks yeah. like one one free fits is going to the world of ruin. I wonder what he's doing there. Any ideas? Uh, world of ruin, uh, self figure out. Maybe to pick something up. Maybe. Maybe, or perhaps just thinks he needs to do some more shopping. Oh, he didn't have shurikens. Maybe he was looking for shurikens. Cause like, shurikens are very cheap, right? You can you can buy a whole lot for not a whole lot of money. Maybe that's what he was. Looking very oh, yeah, true. We're, we're definitely gonna be, you know. Yeah, we are. They're both getting ready to be moving right along. Fitz is hot on his heels. Yeah, I think we're gonna be doing pretty good. The only problem is that, oh, that horrible ninja fight really did. Horrible. Yeah, he's. Uh, thankfully, he was able to recover from it pretty quickly. Uh, this fight, I believe, uh, it doesn't give any experience. I could be wrong, but I, no, I always it, no, think many doesn't. of these don't. Yeah, which is pretty unfortunate early on. Yeah, did uh, he get a potion drop though? At least <laughs> something. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it could come in handy. You know, it, who knows? Maybe a potion's going to be what saves this run. You know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know. Come on. You're yeah, right. You gotta hear yourself somehow on the way to the floating continent. There's no save points on the way up there, right? So, <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh, we we hope that there is no floating continent. That is that is the ideal uh, action here. Uh, how oh. do you guys feel? Oh, that is spicy. Uh, we got a goddess here in Owsers, and it looks like both are gonna come to that unfortunate realization. But we're cracking that shield right off the bat. Uh, we only we're have... gonna mimic it. We're gonna mimic. Oh yeah. It. Oh yeah, and we only have one piece of progression, so she doesn't have a whole lot of uh, life at this point. So I think we can get through this. Yeah, I, yeah. Like, I like this play. You have that was Esper, good. You have an Esper with Ice 3 on it, which basically makes Ice 2 obsolete. You don't really need the shield to teach you the spell anymore, right? So, nice heads up play there from Glue. Yeah, yeah. sometimes you gotta be willing to just, uh, you gotta sacrifice some of the good stuff that you have to get through, especially if you're gonna run into a, a statue that early. It's just a good thing that it was Goddess and not Doom. If it was Doom, well, we would probably be doomed. Because those shields would have healed him instead. Yeah. Um, I mean, Excalibur drops, uh, that is correct. Uh, Goddess does drop Excalibur on death. I hate that NPC as well. It's so annoying. <laughs> I don't know about you. That NPC, when you're trying to get into that item shop, it's just... Ooh, the Schwantz checking the auction house. Perhaps uh, you would just check that as a sort of scouted out, not necessarily to buy the Esper. What are your thought processes on that, Schwantz? Yeah, you can. It takes two seconds to see if they're selling shiny stones or not, and you never know when it will come in handy later. That's true. Many people are completely adverse to ever even looking at the auction house. Uh, it has a, a lot of uh, a lot of rage behind it when it comes to uh, the community and the auction house. I think the RNG just makes people rage out a little bit. It uh, looks like we're gonna fight the uh, Opera Dragon. Really? 
We got some life th or some uh, ice three to learn, probably on Shadow to get him online with some magic, I would assume. So a quick dragon fight, as long as it's not an ice dragon. All right. Might be a little challenging because he does like to start out with some big attacks. Yeah, we're just gonna do a little bit. Of uh, Three thousand damage by realm with a water skein uh, at level what twelve? <laughs> and oh, that yeah, gold dragon that... goes right down. <laughs> oh yeah, he's dead. He's dead. Oh yep. Uh, one free fits doing the exact same tactic over on his side, so goddess should be going down uh, here nope. shortly. Not nope. quite. Maybe the rolls were a little bit less than they were on Glue's side. He didn't have the same oh. levels that Glue had. Mm. He might not have finished. Did he uh, run away from the ninjas? That's probably what caused it. Yeah, he died to the ninja and then didn't take another fight with XP in it like Glue did. Ah, I see. Well, he did get through it, so you know he's moving yeah, right yeah. along as well. He's got an ice rod, so that works too. Blue's going to head on over to uh, Esper Mountain, it looks like. Realm's other check. Let's see what we have there. Uh, this is a really good check. Uh, I like it in general because it's short. You can warp away from it. Mostly. You can't do it right in the room where you fight the boss. And also it is um, peekable. You just take a few steps up. You can see if a character runs down. And it's a, a really good spot to see if it's a missing character that you're looking for. Which I think they are. Um, it is the only peekable left before they are stuck between three options. Kefka and Arsh, Gogo's check, floating continent. I mean, I would, I probably would have went to Gogo's cave by now, but maybe that's just me. I find that to be the most miserable check in the entire game. So I tend to avoid it like the plague. That and Burning House, I will avoid them. I will last check them almost a hundred percent of the time. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, like it's it may be annoying, but it it's quite possible it's there. Absolutely. Not a character. Not a character. So yeah, we're going to be down to uh, Kefka at Narsh, Gogo, or for Floating Continent. See what we find here on Glue's side. Ultros. Uh, I don't think we're going to have much issues with him at all. It's uh, Vanilla Uncle Ultros. Ulti. It's Vanilla. Oh, it is. You're correct. And he's going to die Ultr like Vanilla Ultros. <laughs> no, actually, we don't have Sketch. But... Ah, you're right. We don't have sketch, so we can't dive with the vanilla way, but that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> we got some cheers in chat for uh, Floating Continent 3. That's a hot take. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Ooh, we got a nice Esper there with Bolt 3, so we're just uh, continuing to load Realm up with all the most powerful spells in the game. I call her Murder Child for a reason. <laughs> Very huge magic scene. Yeah, yeah. Big magic seed. And off to the floating continent we go. So it seems Drinks Glue is very similar to me in that uh, Gogo's check doesn't exist unless it's the last check. <laughs> but what's Fitz doing over there, Goku? Vanilla again? Like, that's the... Uh... This isn't even randomized. No, it's not. The monster in a box is the same. He's not doing the World of Ruin Velt check. Uh, I actually forgot about uh, World of Ruin Velt check. I didn't mention that earlier, but this is another peekable, so um, it's 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 good. I think it's a I, perfectly fine check to do. Yeah, it's not not too bad. I mean, you have the you have a it's a peekable, right? It's the it's peekable, so um, you can see what's here. Uh, Magicite, not a character, but you're gonna need it eventually anyway, so. We got wolves in the sky on Glue's side, so we're not looking too good in uh, the experience department there, but I th again, with Realm like this, it really doesn't matter. He will cruise right through this. The question is, what boss are we going to get? Well, let's see here. He didn't, uh, Fitz didn't save in the cave, so... Oh, Oh. <laughs> I was gonna very say... Very uh... scary, very scary. Yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm not just sure like... if he's gonna push through. I'm just saying, like... What if it was like Magi Master or something like that? <laughs> it was a very bold play, definitely. But, you know, if I was racing against Glue and the competition that we're seeing in this Ultros League, especially in Elixir, Mega Elixir, and, and quite frankly, Tonic and Potion, the times have been extravagant this season. You know, I would need to be, Ooh. I would be thinking I need to take some risks as well. Um, I don't think Realm has learned Bolt 3, but Bolt 2 will typically, uh, that, that'll... That'll put him down pretty fast. Uh, Inferno does not like lightning. 
So I did open, I'm sorry to cut in here, I did just open up a prediction where you could bet channel points for where the next character will be. Floating Continent 1, Floating Continent 3, Kefgat Narsh, or Zone Eater. If you want to bet and or earn some uh, character, some channel points, go ahead and do that right now. I'm going to throw in my hateful money into Kefka and Narsh. See what happens. <laughs> The, uh, the water edge wouldn't be so bad here on Inferno, but the Bolt 2 is definitely the, the faster way to get through this fight. Absolutely, and I believe both forms. I know Inferno and his little brother, both of them do not like lightning, is that correct? Yeah, they, they both they are both very weak against it. The main difference is uh, his little brother, I can't remember his name right now, but the little brother does not absorb number fire. One, number difference. 128. Uh, I have a horrible mind for names and numbers like that, so it just doesn't come easily to me. And we got Dullahan up in the, uh, for the second boss here, which, again, I think will go down just fine. Oh no, I pronounce it Dullahan. Dullahan. Either way, I'm not sure which way it would be pronounced. I think it's just kind of like, uh, uh, you know, use what you think is right. I don't think of anything else. Yeah, Let's call I him love... Little Dully Boy. How about that? He's so cute, and now he's dead. <laughs> I love the throw mimic mimic to save on those skins. Oh, 100%. It is definitely one of my favorite tactics. Hey, there's the old man. Oh, there he is. So whoever said uh, Floating Continent won. Get them morphed. points. Get... Oh, he's going to be... Eclipsed by Realm forever, anyway. <laughs> uh, he'll probably be replaced, I assume, unless some of the other characters uh, don't have any particularly useful skills. I mean, I now the question is, go ahead. I was gonna say I definitely see Go Go Stag in the party because of that mimic. Possibly. I find that it tapers off a little bit as the seed goes on. I think uh, some people really love to use Gogo -Go all throughout the seed, but uh, I tend to, assuming the characters allow me and, and it, it makes sense to do so, try to find a way to replace him, um, you know, toward the middle up to the, the end game. But uh, it is definitely a matter of preference. I would definitely keep Gogo -Go here just because of that mimic with the skins. Uh, that would really, like, save on, not only to save on your skins, it also is a free way of using pretty much anything. So... Very true. Question is, do you think that glue is going to uh, finish up Floating Continent? Um, I very rarely jump off the continent um, early, but he did find Strago. Do you think he's going to go all the way? I'd be surprised if he did. If he yeah, jumped I off. Think... Because, like... I would be hoping for a different character. That is true. Strago is well known uh, to be just a collection of some of the worst checks in the game. Maybe with the contested um, option of Fanatic's Tower, if you have the magic, um, I find it's fantastic with the dragon. Guaranteed high tier item, guaranteed yeah, Esper. Think so. Didn't think so. Didn't the, think he was going to jump off. The other <laughs> alternatives for checks right now <laughs> are uh, Strago's checks or Zone Eater. So... Choose wisely. And Kef and Kefka and Narsh, yeah. yeah. Those are. Those... <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah, not. I mean, I don't. I'm not opposed to having to do. Uh, I'm not opposed to having to do uh, Go Go's Cave at all. Yeah, earlier whatever. today, I actually went and did this check where Atma Weapon normally is in vanilla. I did that and then jumped off, but I had a good reason. I had a lot of other backup checks that. We're decidedly not Strago, so it felt like a pretty safe option, and it ended up paying off, but yeah, with Strago, I think he's going to finish this out. Oh, yeah, yeah, Strago just is known for having the worst checks in the entire game. Burning House, horrible, Fanatic's Tower, kind of meh, and Hide and Cave, at least, it, at least it got buffed, but it's still really bad. It is. It's just unpleasant, you know? It's it's just an irritating check. It's not particularly longer than anything else. It's just straight-up irritating, even if it's not that long. Um, and also, I, I see a Fiery Blizzard uh, did mention that this is guaranteed progression at the end of Floating Continent, so it does make sense to go ahead and finish it out, especially this early in the seed. But yeah, I, I definitely would, like, 
leave floating continent if I if I found Strago at the start. I'm just like, you know, maybe maybe there's a different character here. <laughs> we can only hope because the options are bleak. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, that's pretty much what I would do. Just be like. Okay, please do not give me Strago as my only option. Because I've had that before. For like... There were like two characters behind Strago's checks. And it's just... That's a disaster. <laughs> <laughs> but the second I get another character, I'm off Strago's checks if I can avoid it. Um, I do have a question. I see chat is uh, getting a little feisty about the Burning House. Uh, if you had to choose, chat, between Burning House and Leet River, what would it be? I'm interested to hear your thoughts on that. Uh, Personally, I'm Elite River. I'm Elite River yeah, guy. Yeah, Elite River 100%. Um, you don't have to... Yeah, it's Elite River 100%. It's not a long burning house, you know. There's there's a specific time gap, and you don't have to you know, constantly run away from all the different encounters that you accidentally run into, and it's just a disaster. I'd much rather do Elite River. I mean, maybe you can skip it. If you're me, Gar, you don't skip checks in Burning House. You try to skip checks, skip battles, waste time, and get in the fight anyway. <laughs> yeah, I. that's pretty much how I do it, too. <laughs> oh, and away goes Tritok. Uh, go on with some fire schemes. Uh, didn't get to do a whole lot there, so that will be the end of uh, Floating Continent. Let's see what we got. Are we going to be rescued from Strago? Nope. We are not. We are going to get in Esper. What do we got? Let's see. Uh, well, it is that's... Phoenix. Not bad. That does give some life options, especially during uh, Kefka later on if needed. Uh, where are we? Yeah, where are we? I would probably do Fanatics. I would scout it at the very least. Oh, he nope, hasn't done. Uh, he hasn't yeah. done the Vault Cave yet. That's right. He did not. So he doesn't know that it's not a character. Yeah, I would guess immediately after this, he's going to fly straight to Fanatic's Tower and peek it. Um, and I believe if it is a character, he will probably do it. Uh, they have some really strong magic in this in this party. Those espers are uh, pretty stout. And yeah, it looks like uh, the chat was about 50-50 on Burning House and Leet. That's about what I expected. Yeah, I, I definitely do Leet. Leet at least has been better so it's at least been improved yeah for burning, me burning Leet river is uh, the worst check I, I would much rather pull on the sealed gate cave lever than go through the Leet river it's so much faster to just do four grind fights there that being said the Leet river with the last update has been made much much better but it's still way too slow and this is interesting this is something that fix is going to run into that glue did not hear a gigantos that's vanilla we've seen like a couple vanilla trap chests already i can get the instant death going on that one yeah okay. gigantos is an amazing find especially because uh fitz was a little bit behind in uh levels due to uh Die, having two of his characters drop to Goddess um, and not taking as many grind fights with those ninjas, so getting that really catches him up on those levels. 14,000 experience right there. Ah, uh, a pittance. <laughs> Just a, that's the smallest amount of experience from Gigantus. <laughs> yeah, but it's still really good. Oh yeah, no, he's, he's fantastic. You see Gigantus, you are happy. Because yeah. that will catch you up to scaling very rapidly. He's uh, the best experience that you can get out of a monster in a box, and one of the best experience fights in the game. I remember my. I remember one seed. I had a burning house full of gig, full of gigantos, double uh, gigantos, double. That double. is the dream, the absolute double, dream. Double gigantos. That was awesome. Yeah, you just take one of those. You can take two if you want, but it's overkill. You take one of those, you're, you're good. You're way ahead of scaling already. <laughs> I was like, wow, yeah. That was that is, uh, really good. Uh, Glue will always validate every scene by petting the dog, um, because he does have that dog in him. Yeah, he, he always talks about it. It's, it's part of him. If Glue goes through a seed and does not pet the dog, he should be demoted back to Tonic immediately. I'm just saying. I don't even think that's a hot take. The top dog can't just not pet the dog. You understand? 
Lou has threatened well, to cut just, off feeds. Just as a reminder, he is not the top dog. This is the the standings. He's actually in third place after week one, so he he wants well, to be that top dog, but he'll he'll get he, absolutely no shade. Got that Sorry. dog in him. Sorry, Glue. <laughs> All the shade from Schwantz. <laughs> Game. All right, so we have finished uh, our trip to uh, Velt Cave. Are we going... Oh, we're going to Ebbets. Okay. May the odds be ever in his favor. They we did want to see a bunch buff. of fives. They did buff this, though. They did, and uh, I mentioned this on my last stream, but I find that a lot of people maybe don't know of it yet, but you can actually tell when a chest room is going to show up uh, by the load time. So when you step on a button, if the time is loading a little long, it's going to be a room that's not the entrance, the the chest, or the save point. Um, if it's fast, it'll be one of those three. So you can kind of get a heads up of what you're getting just by checking that load time. An interesting little tidbit of information. Yeah, uh, also once you are done collecting coral, uh, there is a... Um, I, I, I doubt you want to do that. Anyway, uh... There is a, I think there's a, there's a percentage chance you're going to go to the save point, or the uh, room, the the chest room, or um, the entrance. The en yeah, the entrance. So that is something that got fixed. Yes, and Glue is getting cursed here. Uh, many ones, many singles. Uh, he just got a five, which is good. I just had to mention how cursed he was being. He got. One three times in a row, and then two. Um, wasn't looking so hot there, but that five finished him off. Yeah, I I despise the coral the coral part. The head cave in general is just so annoying. Ooh, we gonna X zone? Can we get to it in time? Ooh, no, not quite. Now, Narapa, if you're fast enough, if your ATB starts fast enough, you are able to do an area effect. Um, Insta kill and get rid of them. Uh, primarily X zone, uh, X zone, X fur. Either one would work. Uh, and ideally, you can get your attacks or your insta kill off before he does condemned and just wastes too much time. Yeah, um, that bolt edge just one shot. Annihilated. <laughs> they they call. Ooh, we get a character off. Of <laughs> Ooh, what do we got? Cyan. Cyan. Okay, that is fantastic. Uh. Due to the fact that his checks are incredibly not, they're very dense, fast, and one has a dragon. You know, you have Dome of Dream, that's three checks, rapid succession. Wow! That's a very cheap Shen Thief. I have to put that in there. That's like 8,300, if I remember correctly. That was very cheap for a Shen Thief. Wow. Uh, what is there? Is it uh, Esper or. Yeah, it was an, an Esper. Ooh, it was beautiful. an Esper. Yeah. I was. 8300 for an Esper. That's actually pretty cheap. I don't think Glue has visited Zen yet, so he wouldn't have seen that yet. But yeah, that that was awesome. I'm Ooh, <laughs> yeah, uh, Glue is the, uh... getting hit with the not enough money. That's harsh. So he has to take a grind fight to get enough money for that rust rid. It's happened uh... to the best of us. <laughs> <laughs> We've yeah. all been there at one point or another. We go on a shopping trip, go straight to Zozo, and oh no, we don't have enough money. <laughs> that should that do was... it, though. One fight, that was a quick one at least, so he's not going to lose too much time. Yeah, we've all been there. We've all been there. <laughs> it it yeah. feels bad, man. It feels really bad, you know? It's uh, not a good feeling. <laughs> yeah, especially when you're like, you want to get, get going, you know? You're like... Darn it, don't have enough money. Yeah, you're trying <laughs> to go fast and you see it and you're just like, oh, gosh, why? Oh, we have a Fanatics check over at uh, Free Fits. Wonder what's going to be, who or what will be hanging out there. That's Have a check that I used to hate. Oh, I still do. Uh, I find it unpleasant, but I love that it does have the dragon. It has a guaranteed high tier item and it has a guaranteed character. But you gotta run up and you gotta run in circles for like five minutes. Uh. <laughs> no, the the bad thing I have like I try to build my characters on physical damage if I can. That's the thing, and you can't do that in FedEx Tower. So I, uh, I all the time I run into that issue of you know can't can't use that, so I have to use what magic I've got. 
That is true. We don't have a whole lot of physical attack in this seed so far, so Fanatic seems to be the move. You know, we have skeins, we have level 3 spells, but we don't have any big weapons. So, yeah, that's something that I particularly... Oh, I hate this dragon. Yeah, Dirt Dragon is a bit spicy. Um, he's not my least favorite. Uh, definitely uh, White Dragon is my, my least favorite. Too many attacks early and oh, they're all slow. Terra! Ooh, Terra, Terra is... We're definitely going up there. Hello. As Pero Canaris would say, best girl, 100%. Oh, yeah, I'm with you, Team Terra. Dirt Dragon goes down on Glue's side. wonder what he's going to get as his high tier item. I'm sure they're looking for something other than just magic, because magic is inherently slow even if powerful, and it is just an ice shield. I mean, it's a crackable if needed, but it's probably not what he was looking for. I have summoned him. Perok and the Reason chat, hyping up the Terra. Oh, Esper over at uh, Mount, uh, Mount Togo. We got a red dragon. dragon. Red dragon, not bad. We got those water skeins. And ice no, tree, I in fact. We, we can't use skeins. That's it right, you are zero. correct. Yeah. You are correct. No throw here. Uh, good thing we got lots of spells. <laughs> we definitely have those. And that's something uh, I, I, I do that a lot in my own runs. I know I just did it on commentary, but I do it on, in my own runs where I go up there. I'm like, I can throw skeins because they're elemental. No, you cannot. And also, we just got Fenrir on Drink's glue side. So we have our calmness protection, which is always fantastic to see. Yeah, definitely. Um. I definitely, you definitely like to see that. That is Ooh, awesome. Experience so. egg on Fitz's side. Yeah, I immediately put that on realm. Immediately put that on realm. Right now. <laughs> we want Murder Child to be up and running. <laughs> yeah, oh, I think she is, she's up and sprinting. She's in marathon mode now, I think. Um, she's, she's in it for the long haul. Uh, I'm not sure who I would put it at, put it on here. I guess it depends on what espers I have. Um, I really prefer to have my experience eggs on my physical attackers, if at all possible, but we're kind of I... short on physical attackers here. Is he going up just for the s dragon and esper? You don't have a Mara. Oh, this is interesting. Yeah, look at Drink's glue side. It's, it's weird. I don't. He probably has some magic to learn, and he figures he can go up here, get that magic learned, and uh, get an esper check while he's at it. Yeah, I, I just something I never see. That is a very interesting play. Ooh, uh, this dragon is not gonna last very long. No. This nope. this dragon, uh, we got bolt three. Yeah, he's uh, goodbye. Next. <laughs> Drinks glue does like to kill his dragons. He has said several times his uh, his main desire. One of the things that he wants to achieve in his career is to win a race while killing all dragons. Um, I'm not sure if this is the seed for that or the race for that, but who knows? He is a man of the people. He likes to put on a show, so let's see what happens. We have Hayden up there in Fanatic Tower. And just a force shield from Dar for Drink's glue for his efforts. I mean, force shield is a good thing. It puts auto shell on you and increases your magic defense by a whole lot. Absolutely. It is a good, a good, uh, you know, high tier or a good, a good shield to have, but I just think that's probably not exactly what they're hoping for at this point. Well, it can't be progression. Uh, uh, or maybe, maybe we'll see like a magus rod or something like that would be really good, but. I'm always hoping for that Illumina. Give me that Illumina or a VK if I have someone who can use it. I'm a happy man. Well, I mean, we're not really going for physical damage here. We're going for magic, so... That's pretty much what we're doing. Oh, we I suppose use... that's that's my argument, is I would like to have someone to balance my team out. You know, we're so magic-heavy, having some physical attacks would be, uh, would be great. At least uh, in the way that I tend to build my team comps. Alright, Hayden is down! Yo, we can now go grab that Terra. Yeah, and we do have no way to kill Girl right now, as uh, as Schwantz mentioned in chat there. So that's that's something important. Um, uh, do we have shurikens? We could uh, potentially use shurikens if we've picked any of those up. Oh, we are we're uh, 
poisoned, so... All right, Tritok Spot is down. It was Chatternook. Why, why did we unequip Chatter? Oh, he, uh, replacing uh, with Terra. Oh, so. yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, he's staging it, so he can immediately just sub her in and have him equipped. We got Golem on Drink's glue side, so we have double the Calmness protection now. Yeah, double. And Cure 3, so we, we're going to have no issues with Cure in this seed. Fitz might not get either one of those Espers either. You yeah, think he might not go to Zen? Um, he might go to Zen, do you think? Well, one is... is Zozo, Cyan's, Zozo. Yeah, one is Cyan's check, and he doesn't have Cyan yet. The other is in Tritok, which is not really a spot most people go to unless they have Umaro, so... You are very right. Uh, Cyan was um, at Ebbets Rock, which uh, most people do avoid, like the plague, so... You are very right that he likely will not go there. I wouldn't but have got knows? it. You know what makes I would... the Fanatics Tower walk even better, guys? <laughs> <laughs> poison We're oh poison. yeah the visual effects just really give me uh, that 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 warm fuzzy feeling in my belly it's just it it's gets, so calming it, and soothing it gives me a headache because those things hurt my head but that's okay <laughs> <laughs> uh, get me my girl in here oh yeah well what's she got that's what we we want to know what does she have GP natural. rain and natural magic I mean I mean, natural Not magic is good. Natural magic is really good. Got a plate of spaghetti and the uh, Dome of Dream. Now, I, again, I don't think they're going to last particularly long with how many no. uh, different elemental spells that we have. Nothing really has at the moment. <laughs> no. Uh, the um, bottom left uh, spaghetti noodle there, that one is auto-deathable, um, so X-Zone could work, Doom could work, you could uh, instant kill it if it's a reason, if there's a reason for you to do so, as opposed to just killing it. Oh yes, get that poison off the screen, we don't need, we don't need to see that, but uh... Oh, we got I mean, Terra! you don't want to stare at it any longer? No, Come it on, it's fantastic. It gives me a headache. <laughs> Wow. Straight I, over I, the fun I, I think we're peeking this. I think that's what's happening. I think we're peeking it. That's what I would do as well. I, he's already very close to it, so it makes sense to peek it and see if it's maybe that sixth character. Yeah, exactly. It's an Esper. Um, I wouldn't do that because we have a lot of other options, but I don't know what he's going to do. Yeah. Yeah. yeah oh, there's that Valiant knife I was mentioning over on Drink's glue side. The spaghetti was holding a knife, so uh, we'll see if he ends up using it for any reason. He may or may not. Uh, they don't have an offering yet, and I'm sure nobody is set up for HP. And we do have a Mog. Yeah. Uh, will I... be our guaranteed progression. Uh man. Yeah. This seal gate check takes a while, but man, is that treasure just kind of uh, kind of luring, you know? <laughs> it is. I struggle to go there for speed as opposed to looting the like 15 chests in the basement. But if you're not looting, it ends up being a pretty uh, a pretty middle of the ground check. You know, it's not very long if you just blitz through it. It is kind of long if you want to do some loot, though. Yeah, uh, I had to memorize this whole thing in Domedry when I was a kid. Just had a hard time with it. So and now it's just, now it's kind of muscle memory. So we had a discussion a while back about randomizing that chest puzzle and forcing runners to go into the previous car to look at what the chest puzzle was in order to open that lever. Would you guys think that that would be interesting to do? Yeah, considering we have the uh, randomized Zuzzle clock, I think it would be kind of an interesting thing because that would also make it so that uh, you would go to that car that no one else goes to. So it would it would kind of force them to go to that car there, the, and to actually see what you know what it is and move on. I think that's I think that's a good thing. My knee jerk reaction is to say it is the worst idea I've ever heard in my entire life. However, <laughs> it uh, it does make sense to you know I feel like Doma Dream, it's a very powerful check. You know you do have three pretty rapid succession checks behind two bosses. Um, it would kind of mix it up a little bit. Do I think I want it in Ultros League as a default? 
Maybe not. <laughs> but a cool option to add. I would love to see it. Yeah, it's it's cool. It's a cool option to add. Kind of like we have the sense of the clock thing where you have to talk to the thieves in Zozo to kind of figure out what the, what it is, you know? I see a the randomized thieves. burning house, and uh, I think we should uh, ban Nizular. I'm just joking. <laughs> <laughs> do not, the do, thing with, do, the thing do not with will the that into existence. The thing with the Zozo <laughs> clock is it's completely optional, right? Whereas the, the, the Phantom Train world of ruin doma dream thing would be required so that's the only hesitation there randomized kafka tears don't get me ideas Ooh. Uh, there's a lot of spicy things that you could do when you start getting into that mindset start randomizing other things terrifying it looks like strago is the only one who could use the knife and he's gonna go for it oh i mean we got a stabby old man on our hands. Do we have an HP Esper, though? Yeah, one of them is HP plus 50. Oh, beautiful. I, so, yeah, I probably switched that right on to him. I, I really laughed when you said we got a stabby old man on our hands. <laughs> we do got a stabby old man on our hands. <laughs> In your kidneys! <laughs> <laughs> oh, two dead checks and a mog. Yeah, that's rough for Doma Dream. Uh, you I hate to just... see it. Uh... Ooh, we're running, I think. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, this is not worth the time ever to fight that thing. I mean, vulnerable to instant death, but... <laughs> I didn't know that. You get instant death, a presenter? Yep, uh, X Zone uh, and Doom both work. Interesting. You know, it's funny, if X Zone hits both the f head and the, sh the the shell, you get two Dragon Claws instead of one. Or you <laughs> oh, could really? Also, or you could also have this weird conundrum where X Zone hits the shell but misses the head, and you just have a floating head. <laughs> oh, now I have to do this. I had no idea this was a thing. Next time I see him, I am X Zoning that thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's it's definitely it's definitely funny. Uh, we have an Edgar bo uh, bo uh, gating the this check, but it's uh, spicy chicken. Get your spicy chickens in chat, everyone. Ooh, I got one of those. Well, it's not mine, but it's uh, Moogleplex. Got one of his here. Uh, GL. Just wanna. Um, we got Kefka Doma as well. Just wanna note here. Um, he is, uh, he looks like he may be weak to ice, but he's actually weak against poison. Yeah, you would think a giant spicy chicken using fire attacks would be weak to ice. Uh, that is not the case. It's right up there with Fun Baba, the giant green ogre who skips leg day, uh, being, being weak to poison. You would not expect such a thing. Ooh, another yeah. dead check. So it looks like Cyan was almost entirely dead checks with just one Esper in Zozo and one Mog in Doma Dream. So not oh. the best results from Do from uh, Cyan's checks. That is rough. And he's going to go check Zo Zen now. Go ahead. Uh, unfortunately, uh, Terra did not live through... Uh, that horrible attack that Spice Chicken did um, through. Uh, I just did on Terra. That is unfortunate. And uh, uh, Glue uh, is uh, r really doing the poor strats. You know, he's he's seeing that not enough money sim uh, message come up left and right in this seed. Yeah, definitely. He's been a, a, a poor dude. But, uh, well, we got through it. We got the expert. So we have Edgar now on Fitz's side. Where do you think we're going first? Uh, that is a fantastic check uh, or question. I would probably go and do the South Figaro basement. Um, that way I could also check the throne right afterwards. But it looks like he's going straight for the throne. Uh, possibly looking for another character to skip those two. Uh, a lot of people don't seem to like those checks. Something uh, I didn't... Uh, no, until I started um, playing the uh, randomizer for this specific game. Um, oh, there's lock. Uh, but yeah, uh, 
I didn't know that the uh, that Edgar, um, well, Edgar in the lead, it works just like in Figaro Castle in uh, World of Ruin, San Figaro. Absolutely, which is so good to take advantage of, especially early on when you're trying to buy all those items. You know, if you're looking for earrings and they happen to be in World of Ruin, South Figaro, or those sleeping bags that are always highly coveted, getting those for half off is fantastic. And even better later on, if you can find some half off Mega Elixirs, you are good. But yeah, yeah. Locke over on uh, Fitz's side, and we have uh, Glue heading on up to do Lone Wolf. Oh, and likely you... to beat Kefka and Narsh as well. Where would you go at this point? Uh, I'm inclined to, to probably do what Glue is doing as well. Um, there's not a lot left to do, really. He has Mog and he has Gogo um, and Kefka at Narsh. So I think this is this is the move right now with the characters that he's got. Oh, and he I has was three talk- checks back to back. Oh, uh, sorry. I was I was talking about Fitz. Oh, I see. Um, well, like, he got lock, yeah. and he, he is going straight to uh, Tunnel Armor, which definitely makes sense. Um, and then I would probably go check Weapon Shop, um, especially because with Terra, you can go get both rewards from Locke's Weapon Shop. You pick one at, at the Weapon Shop, you go behind the Welk Cave in World of Balance Narsh, and you go get the second one. So if you got two good items there, or an Esper and a good item, it's a fantastic deal. Yeah, uh, I think that was one ice three on Ifrit and Shiva. Oh, we have a go mode already? We do have a go mode. Wow. So Fitz ready? got the last bit that he needed, and I think he might even be considering doing Kefka and Narsh here to warp back down. We have uh, Drinks Clue is already in go mode. I saw that pop up. Got the last one from Lone Wolf up there. Yeah, that's... And his awesome. levels are looking real good. You know, it's these are really good levels. Uh, yeah. My main concern is just, like, the, the intense lack of any physical offense. Which oh, uh, does... Good. It does cause issues when you have to deal with uh, with Lady in Tier 3. Um, I, I need to check his throwables when he opens it up to see if he's got some shurikens that can push through that. Uh, interesting that we are... Uh... Oh, Minerva, 100%. Yeah, Thunder uh, Shield and Minerva, he probably doesn't even need to go behind Welk. Uh, <laughs> I'm interesting doing Kefka and Narsh here. Yeah, I'm not sure. I'm going to actually make a note of that. I'd like to ask him a question of what uh what the thought process was on doing Kefka and Narsh. There is the teleport, you know, and maybe there's an Esper with some good spells, or who knows, maybe even a dead check that can uh, really push it uh, for the end game here. But I'm curious what the thought process is. Yeah, because you're go mode already, right? And he's going to get Narsh, I guess. Yeah, he's going for skip. He's got 19 checks. So this one would give him 20. That puts him at the bottom. Then he'll go pick up Mog's other check for 21. And then he'll do a dragon for 22. Or maybe he'll kill Toilet Atma and a dragon for 22. So it makes sense for him to do this. It doesn't really matter what this is. Because he'll just get skip. And Fitz, by the way, has... 16 checks right now, so he just needs three more espers for go mode, but he needs six more checks. And the even if you don't it. need that thunder shield, you might as well get it just for another check to skip, right? Absolutely. I actually didn't realize that glue was uh, so close to skip, so that absolutely makes sense. You might as well do it while you're there, and it looks like he's likely going to go up center path, uh, do toilet atma into the dragon, and uh, get that skip that way. Yeah, I, I wouldn't go and do uh, <laughs> Mog's... Uh... Oh, I just saw what Drinks Glue is doing here. He just bought uh, 11 Mithril Rods. So I believe his tactic of getting rid of Girl is going to be to throw sticks at her until she dies. So uh, that I think that's how he's solving that. <laughs> you have Ultima, huh? All right. <laughs> Ultima on that Bahamut S for... <laughs> uh, well, we maybe are... if the fights are good enough, he might be able to learn it, but um, I'm not sure that's quite the focus. But it's good to have, you know, just to chuck one out there. It can definitely uh, get, help you get through some tears a little faster. Yeah, I... Yeah, I definitely take the... Uh... 
I definitely, I, I think, yeah, we're going the center path here. Uh, probably gonna be, uh, kill a, uh, Toilet Atma and the dragon. Yeah, and I, I love that play in general. It's uh, I find it the that that's my favorite way to get the skip. Um, if I'm two away, just getting two high tier items right at the end, you know, it can it can really help out the last climb if you get something that you really need. Not to mention just dragon experience. Well, we have a dead strago on uh, Fitz's side. <laughs> we do. Interesting point from Schwantz and Chad. Yeah, Toilet Atma does not increase scaling. I, uh... Actually, I did know that, come to think of it. <laughs> I was gonna say, I didn't know that, and yes, I did. But that is uh, an awesome point to make. You know, dragons do increase scaling when you kill them. However, uh, Toilet Atma does not. Uh, and he also doesn't give any progression, so you're not gonna increase scaling that way either. All right. Uh... Are we gonna do it that? So it looks like that. We have VK uh, Strago. Are we gonna? Are we gonna put the offering on it? We very well may. Um, likely similar to what I do. Uh, maybe he'll do his equipping after this dragon. I usually will go through these two checks, do all my equipping and espers, and then warp out and go right back in with the shortcut. Uh, storm Dragon, despite being, you know, stormy, you would think Storm, Lightning, etc. No, he's it's very wind. weak to Lightning. Yeah, very it's weak wind. to Lightning. <laughs> very wind. Very breezy. <laughs> we breezed through it, too. <laughs> and Fitz knows that there is a phantom over in... Uh, uh, I can't remember the name of that that town. Um, Mobilis. Like he, Mobilis. I am terrible at names, I tell you. But I know, he knows that Phantom is here. He also got Golem up at uh, World of Ruin Narsh over in the Tritox spot. So he'll be really good with uh, Calmness Protection as well. And Phantom is really good for getting through to Tier 2 10 hits. Get through that a little faster and safer. Oh, well, yeah. It, it also depends on like when you use it, right? Certainly. I if I have multiple forms of Calmness Protection, I really want to be using Phantom on Tier 2 10 hits. It just speeds it along very fast. You know, otherwise it's super slow waiting for all the hit animations or the block animations, but Phantom just... it speeds it way up. We're, uh, we're moving along. Moving right along, so Drinks Glue heading on in with his shortcut. Starting his final Kefka climb. Well, not the Kefka climb, but the final bit of Kefka before the final boss. And we have yeah, we got, a bunch of fish. We have an old man and Terra fighting the uh, flying fish. <laughs> Interesting spot for them. Thankfully, it's not a super threatening fight, although they, they do hit harder than you might expect at this scaling level. Uh, we got some some Barbies and a Marshall, which uh, can be a bit sketchy, but uh, likely should be able to get through it. Not my favorite fight in the world on a single uh, on one of the wings of Kefka's tower. I don't. I don't really think this is like. I don't think this is like. I hate the one with Retainer and Marshall. Those. That's my least favorite. That is the worst of the bit, yeah. Uh, or the uh, are the ogors, the ones that can uh, can zombify you. That one's also terrible. Man, I think this man. one is the least threatening of the options for Marshall, but it's still pretty obnoxious if some of their status ailments, you know, take effect. You know, I had him jumping Terra, uh, like in my. Uh... A previous seed, it was kind of cool. I have never been so lucky as to get an imp set, but one day maybe I'll remember it exists when I get imp armor and not just immediately sell it the second I, I see imp in the name. First, you have to have the imp spell. Yeah. 
Alright, so then, well, the, the Marshall with, is down. The thing with the imp gear is that the imp armor and the tortoise shield and the helmet, they all teach the imp spell. So if you have one of them, you'll eventually learn imp at some point. I had no yeah. idea that was a thing. I love I love that. Thank you for that information. That's really cool. Yeah, but the, the thing is, do you really want to put it on before you become an imp? I mean, depending I upon what you're doing, it doesn't really matter. If you're jumping anyway, you're in the air, right? So. True. We got a ghost train for the we, uh, guardian spot. We cannot duplex it. No, we cannot. Ooh, a confused that realm is pretty sketchy. Nobody's That's not good. what you want to see. <laughs> it wasn't intended, but thank you for calling it. <laughs> Ooh, reset. That's unfortunate. So lost a bit of time there. I uh, was hoping that X zone would hit since he is instant killable, but a confused realm is that's pretty dangerous. Yeah, especially with like what she's got currently. <laughs> yeah, only some of the most powerful spells in the game and probably like 80 magic power. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Hopefully it goes a little better this time with the X zone. That was heavy hit. Uh, wheel hits shockingly hard. Like sometimes at this scaling, like things will they, they tend to hit hard and man, X zone just doesn't want to take. The That's... train does not want to be sent to the Shadow Realm today. <laughs> oh we get a pearl! And it's gonna hit Realm too, isn't it? Yes, it is. But she should still be okay. This is uh this is a spicy train. I don't know about spicy chickens, this is a spicy train. But he does go down. He was very resistant. But he is done for. Yeah, uh very dangerous, but it's all good, because we managed to get through it. <laughs> now to see what we have at uh, the Validation Chest is a Magicite. Um, interpret that how you will. Some people say that w that item will uh, influence how well your Kefka climb goes. I'm not sure if I put any stock in that. But, uh, yeah, we have uh, Ultras 1 hanging out at Statue Spot, and, uh, yep, yeah, and he's gone, so don't blink. Uh, Bolt 3, yeah. <laughs> We're done with the middle. We got one more side to go on Glue's side before it is time for Kefka. And I see uh, Fitz is uh, went and checked out uh, this, some of the spots that Glue checked out a little earlier. Finished up Ebbets, got Cyan, uh, still one Esper down. So my guess is he's gonna go. Looks like Doma Siege first. I believe he's going to be a little disappointed with, um, I believe it was a character? I could be wrong. No, it wasn't a character. What was it? I think it was a dead check. We're about to find out. Yeah, we're oh, about we got to another find Ultros. Out. We have uh, the Disgusting Ultros 3 over on uh, Drinks Blue side. No experience, but also no threat. He will get through that in no time and be moving right along. Now he gets to fight his Kefka at Narsh, which is Kefka at Doma. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what do you want to be? What do you want me to call it? <laughs> That's what it is. Kefka at Doma is perfect. And Chupan does not like ice. Um, I I learned quite early that uh, you know you you know octopus soup from hitting Ultros with fire. He's very weak against it. Chupan is not. Chupan will absorb that. He he will nom that up. So uh, you want to go uh, either lightning or ice for for Chupan. He eats fire for breakfast. He does. And that will do it for drinks glue. Uh, Fitz unfortunately coming up empty on his last Esper. Uh, you you hate to see you know uh, an Esper hunt like this at the very end. It can be very frustrating when it's just dead check, dead check, dead check, dead check, and you're just one away. Thankfully, but, uh, Mountain Sozo uh, 
the Gurney Two Mountains also, which is we do know is an Esper. It is an Esper, one hundred percent. And best news, he had enough money for the Rustrid. So there you go. Yeah. Yeah. And glue on switches at about one hour and 40 seconds i believe somewhere around there so fantastic time coming up um, i believe we're looking to beat a 116 xx in order to claim the first place spot for this week uh schwantz has those stats up on his side and can confirm but i believe it was a 117 116 52 uh which as long as things go well for glue here i think um i think you know this is his race to lose at this point so I think uh, I think as he'll do just as, fine, and let's see how it goes. As long <laughs> as nothing really bad happens, uh, I think we're gonna be good. Yeah, but you know, Kefka can Kefka sometimes. So now, for those now? who may not know, for those that may not know, uh, Kefka has four different phases. Uh, phase one here has three different targets. You have your long arm on the left, which is instant deathable. You have the head at the top, which is weak to fire. And you have the short hand on the right with the balled up fist. Balled up fist really likes to punch you in the face whenever you hit it. Um, the what you really want to do here is instant death, long arm on the left, fire attack magic on the head and kill that, and then kill short arm with the balled fist. If the head dies last, you get quaked, and if you're not floated, you're gonna start crying because it's probably gonna kill some people. I love how he did made everyone defend before he moved them to the back. That is some really good stuff. I, in speaking of Dirt Dragon that's on the screen on Fitz's side, I always seemed, I think I've been seeing to find him in Fanatic's Tower the last, I don't know how many seeds I went in Fanatic's Tower. <laughs> Ooh, I like this, uh, this, this tactic over on Drink's Glue side. He's going to go ahead and throw Vanish on Realm just so that she does not get punched in the face by Short Arm when it counterattacks because that thing hurts. It's hitting her in the back row for over, I think it's like 1,200 damage. So the last thing he wants is to get a kill shot on it, and then it kills Realm, and she doesn't get to go up. Um, I believe that is his main offense during uh, during Kefka, so he's gonna he's gonna keep her well protected throughout this fight. Strago keeping the granddaughter safe over here. Ooh, the real chatty has mentioned 1,984. One punch to Realm, so having her vanished is uh, it seems like a great idea. Oh, we've done the, done the math. math Alright, so head is dead, and so is short arm, so we're moving on to the second phase. Did you want to go over how this phase works? So there are four, um, there are four different targets. Uh, the one in the back is magic, which can be muted. The one in the center, um, to the right of magic is tools, which can be hit with instant death. Uh, also be vulnerable to poison. Uh, the top right is hit, which counters with ten hits if he's, when he dies. And then bottom right is tiger, which does a whole lot of nasty attacks, uh, including uh, zombie, so you know, kind of kill uh, Tiger really fast. We can get ice though, so uh, most of the time. Zombie and North Cross can ruin a run. Zombie and North Cross <laughs> can really slow you down. Oh yeah, I've had those plenty of times. Oh, I get. Remember when I had uh, one of the times where I had uh, this great offense, and here comes. Um, Tiger and his uh, North Cross to every single party member is frozen. <laughs> oh, it's so fun! I love, I love watching that. You know, it's it's so fun. Um, and Fitz, uh, it looks like he not only got his uh, his unlock, but the skip at the same time. So he is now in Kefka's tower as well. We're gonna throw some sticks at him, apparently. Oh yeah, we throw sticks at Magic all day long. Um, I have to assume that Tiger is already dead? Yes, Tiger's wow. dead. Wow, yeah, I was uh, looking at Fitz's side. Yeah, Ice 3 will make very short work of Tiger if you got some uh, some powerful magic users, which, boy, do both of these players have powerful magic users. We got Murder Child. I wonder, is he going to use Phantom Strats here? I don't know if he equipped Phantom under his Espers, but um, 
I, I love to have it for 10 hits at the end. Especially because Realm is pretty fragile. Uh, we're getting some horrible imp stuff on uh, such a side. Yeah, this is why I don't like those Barbies. They're not like super deadly deadly, but they're very, very annoying. And can severely slow you down at the very least. Gary, is he dead? Don't think so. Oh. Let's see. Not yet. The thing you don't want to see... You don't want to see, um... Mm, he's going Fenrir instead of uh, Phantom here. That works Which, as well. I, I, I agree on this, you know. Yeah, yeah Glue uh, wouldn't have gotten Phantom because he doesn't have Terror, right? Yeah. Because uh, Phantom, Phantom was that Mobless. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Phantom was that Mobless. And, uh... Shout out to Schwantz over here, killing it as the restreamer and the tracker, keeping us honest over here. What a legend. And, uh, I want to take a quick little time to uh, shout out the runners as well as the commentary team. Give them all a follow. Great community. And, uh, I, I definitely love doing these commentary sessions. And, of course, the runners who put on the show for us. Go give each one of them a follow. Please do. They are amazing. And both of them are mentors. Uh, something we haven't mentioned yet uh, is that there is a mentorship program. There is, of course, you know, the Moogle Cup that we have going on, but, you know, maybe you're a little more advanced than the Moogle Cup and just need to, to shore up your game. Uh, both of these wonderful runners are mentors. You sign up for the mentorship program and they'll be more than happy to assist you with any questions, anything you might have. But, uh, Glue here is starting up on tier three, and this is uh, this is what most people fear the most of the Kefka climb. Uh, it can go south very fast. On the upper left, you have the floating lady head. We just call her Lady. She likes to heal. Uh, she also likes to eat magic for breakfast. So you have to throw all your physical attacks or non-elemental attacks, such as Bahamut here, will damage her. Any throwables, like those sticks, will damage her. She only has 10,000 life. You do 10,000, she drops dead. If you kill sleep, First, she will revive sleep back at full life, which you do not want. That is a terrible, terrible trade-off for you. So, you kill Lady first, then you move on to sleep. Sleep is the tricky one. Um, once you get him to about 30,000 life, he starts counter-attacking with reckless abandon. He will throw Train at you, which throws Blind and Silence on your entire party, and he will also throw Medio at you, which does a ton of physical damage. Um, not only will he do it the second he gets pushed into his counterattack phase, but every time you attack him, he has a chance of counterattacking. So, what you really want to do is get him as close to that 30 as possible. Put up your Calmness Protection, Golem, um, Fenrir, or in dire situations, Phantom or Life 3, and then push him, hopefully, in one attack all the way to dead, if you can, in any way possible. Otherwise, try to do it in as few attacks as possible. Once he dies, he will do something called Calmness, which is a physical attack that instantly kills any character that it hits. As it is physical, it can be negated with physical defense, um, either with shields to block it, Golem to block it, or Fenrir with image to dodge it. Oh, yeah, we're getting... We got another W win going off here. Ooh, good thing we really get the cure three. Ooh, man. We're having... Yeah, I've, I've died so many times to this. It's ridiculous. He can be very spicy. If, if he drops a Whirlwind and then you accidentally push him into Medio phase, and you're Whirlwinded, you haven't healed, Medio comes up, your run is over. You know, he could take you out just with that. So this, uh, this definitely requires a lot of finesse on this fight, uh, as well as a bit of math to make sure that you can get through it safely so that you can go and fight Final Kefka with as many of your party still remaining as possible. Breaking a shield? Does look like I think he's going to push him into it, throw a shield right in his face, and finish it up. That makes sense. Yeah, so he's countering now, he's gonna chuck that shield right at him, end it, and just call this call this done. He doesn't want to play with his Medio any more than he has to. Fair I will have to apologize in advance if there's a uh, scratching noise on my mic. Uh, my cat has made an appearance. I'm trying to keep her face off the mic as she tries to rub on it, but 
Sometimes it doesn't work out. Yeah, my cat is also up on my mouse mat right now. <laughs> so if I accidentally click on anything or the stream goes down, that's why, That's you know why. <laughs> Always blame the cats. But Abby says hello, everybody. And uh, Glue got through that expertly. You know, he didn't have a way to break that damage cap to do over 10,000, so he made sure to push him into Meteo phase and immediately crack a shield for, for 9,999 and get him straight through it with Fenrir's Calmness Protection. So um, let's see how this fight goes. Uh, this fight, you want to do as much damage early on as possible. Um, if you do enough, I want to say it's over 30,000? Schwantz, do you know the number to get him to not do Fallen One? Yeah, 30,000. Yeah, you want to do 30,000 before he gets his first turn, if possible. Uh, you will stop him from doing Fallen One, which brings your entire party to 1 HP. Uh, it's not the end of the world getting down to 1 HP if you have a Mega Elixir or a Cure 3, but it's still not ideal. You'd rather just be plugging him with damage as fast as possible. Um, if you can push him past that, he'll go straight to his Goner charge-up phase, where you can just keep throwing damage at him back to back to back. Looks um, like we didn't make there this one. We did but... not, yeah. The, the damage output of this party in general is quite low, so it, it doesn't surprise me after cracking the shield on sleep that he didn't quite have enough to push him through uh, on tier 4. Um, Fitz looks like he has gone on his switches and is about to start his climb as well. And yes, uh, we do have mention of Ultima counters in chat. Uh, once Kefka is at the back end of his life, I want to say uh, past 50,000 life, or 50,000 damage, he can start countering. And he can counter with Ultima, which you know, can be pretty spicy. Um, spicy as in it will just, it can kill you if your life is not high enough or you don't have enough magic defense. Yep, and uh, well, we're, we're pushing it. We got some good magic though. That's good. Okay, that yeah. means, that hyperdrive getting... means that we are in goner phase and we need to uh, cool down a little bit. Yeah, well, yeah, he was definitely in counter phase there, so it's pretty sketchy, but he is now in goner phase, so he will not counter at all in this phase. So you are free to throw everything you have at him to try and kill him before he drops goner on you. Uh, goner's not the worst thing in the world, but really, you don't want it to go past this phase. That way you can just say, he's dead, it's gone, you don't have to worry about Ultima counters anymore. But Goner is not gone. Goner is not gone. He's going to eat that, and... Um, Let's see how he finishes this up. That kind of hurt. He's taking it. Going for the risk. Ooh, this is scary. Oh, yeah. Any, any attack. Any attack at all. No matter how little the damage can trigger an Ultima. So, uh, Glue is in a precarious situation, and I think he's just going to hang on for the ride until the next goner phase. Um, that way he doesn't risk proccing another Ultima, or proccing an Ultima, or maybe not. Maybe he's just going to roll with it. Uh, no, he's going to play it safe, it looks like. So we're waiting for the next goner phase so he can safely finish this fight without the threat of an Ultima. But Fitz is, uh, looks like he has the same idea that Glue had, only a little bit more, uh, a little bit more extensive. He's got everybody, um vanished except for Gogo. I guess he doesn't like Gogo very much. He doesn't care if Gogo gets punched in the face. Well, yeah, Gogo is not that great of a character. But... <laughs> it looks like uh, Glue made the right choice here in, uh, in waiting because he was not one shot away. He was several shots, but I think that is it. And, and we that have a is GG. A, yes, that is a GG. Uh, a finish of 1-14-20. That is uh, actually a few minutes before uh, that our is. first place. So That puts Glue in first place this week. What a legend. Very well played. So everybody, get your GGs in chat. And as for Fitz, he has finished up his, uh, his phase one. He's moving on to phase two. So remember, keep in mind that it's this is not just a heads-up race. It's a race for the pod, and we'll bring up the times here in the corner. Uh, no, we won't, because I accidentally minimized the window. There we go. Uh, <laughs> so Glue has the first place time with 1.14.20 under Zenobian's uh, now second place of 1.16.52. Mark has got 1.18.48. So Fitz wants to get, you know, maybe... 
he'll probably get after Mark, but hopefully before Jex is 141-33. So that'll give him third place for this week so far. Absolutely. Uh, we are, yeah. we are. Uh, and we have, we have, uh, Drink Slew has joined us. GG's on your run. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Uh, with that, uh, you, uh, how are you feeling now on your, uh, on your run so far? I mean, uh, I am ecstatic and disappointed at the same time. That was the best possible starting character you could ever have ever. And it felt like I was going to flirt with a very, 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 very fast time. But then unfortunately when you, uh, stumbled a little bit at the end and still turned out a respectable time you could be proud of, but... That felt like an all-timer there for the first thirty minutes or so. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you can't argue with a uh, with a throw realm. <laughs> that is a great way to start a seed. You love to see it. Yeah. Uh, so, what are your thoughts on the seed in general? Um, obviously, the throw realm, and then Gogo -Go just sitting there as well is an amazing start. And, and then you saw for the first hour, that's how pretty much every fight went. Was uh, realm would throw, Gogo -Go would mimic it, and that was it. Um. And that was fantastic, and I was fortunate not to run into any of the tougher bosses um, that, that could have walled that, that amazing setup. Um, I just kind of ran out of steam at the end, um, just because th throw was awesome, amazing, and then when I tried to taper off to physical throws, it wasn't doing as much just by having a hero ring. So I really would have needed to put the hyper risk if I wanted to go that way, so... That's also why Final Kefka took too long. I think I was like on one... 101 ish on the switches and then finish at 114.25. I probably spent longer on the final Kefka fight than all the other fights the rest of the game combined just because of that, but nevertheless. Absolutely. I need to take one quick pause here to say one free fits with Terra at 63 life, Strago at 29 life during that, uh, that 10 hits, and Gogo coming in there with the true knight to save their lives. Fantastic play there. <laughs> Yeah, very nice. Sure. Uh, what were you? Um, what were your like thoughts on going to Hide and Cave as opposed to um, going to like uh, the Nash Tower? You hold all that magic. Uh, what made you decide to go to Evatrock first? Um, when I did, I had fully planned. Uh, when I saw Strago, I was like, "Crap! I have to do Strago checks now." or do uh, Zone Eater really late, which you don't want to do really late, or you had to go to uh, Kefket Nars. So I decided, let me go do Cave on the Belt. I'll let that warp me down there to Strago's Neck of the Woods, and I'll just do Strago's checks until I find a character, and then I will relieve myself of my Strago uh, duties and go on about my business. So that that was the thought process. If I, there wasn't anything in Ebbets Rock, I was probably just going to go straight into uh, Burning House next. Yeah, the uh, next Tower had Terra, so... I would have unlocked a, a new can of worms there. That would have been very nice. Uh, yeah, we, there was a lot of uh, offense and all that stuff, the spells. Um, that VK offering uh, for Strago would have been really nice uh, earlier, right? Yeah, that's why I put Strago in his own lane, uh, just in case he can bust out the VK offering and do, like, you know, anywhere from 1500 to 2k a turn and. He can get through the tougher fights a lot easier in case there happened to be one there. And then uh, Gogo -Go could throw, and then Ter I mean, Realm could obviously throw. So that was the setup with the tower. But but again, there was no tough bosses in the tower whatsoever. The only scary boss I ran into was Goddess, and that was the first one I fought. And I just said, you know, I don't want to spin, I don't want to risk it. So I just broke the ice shield right then and there. Uh, Edgar was found uh, at the Welk Gate check. Nice. So, we had even more options after oh, that. That was that was Poltergeist that fight. So you dodged that yeah that boss. Yeah, I, I did see that... one boss that was uh, giving you a little bit of trouble today, Glue, and that was the Wallet boss. Uh, quite a few oh, times yeah, that you was... found yourself uh, in spots without enough money. The Zen Esper as well as the the Rust Rid. <laughs> you hate to see it. We've all been there, but it, it feels pretty bad. <laughs> Well, that's, you were, that, you were that's just the byproduct of uh, the Throw Realm, is because as soon as I saw, well, I think she had, what, 56 magic power, 54 magic power, I was like, oh, that's a solid character. 
Um, let me just find skeins and hopefully earrings going about my business. And then there's uh, uh, two skeins, two different elemental diversity in the skeins, and two shops, and then warp stones, and then um, earrings in one of the South Figaro's or Narsha's, I forget. Actually, I think it was both. Um, and then you come across earrings, and you, you really don't need much more. You know, if you go to the basement, you know, um, what what are you hoping to find to get you going already? You have, if you find, you know, more mineral shields to get two skill spells, you, you already have that with your skeins. Um, you can't really have any of the better characters with, uh, they can equip the big swords, as you saw later on, that weapon. But if you find a big sword down there, you don't have anybody to well, use it, so why not? Um... I almost thought about going to Floating Continent right away once I saw that, but um, I, I, that, that, that that's really, really, really risky. And then, um, just in case you get, you can barely get easy walled because uh, I didn't have anything for a Poltergeist or a Magic Master. Despite having throw, and I know if I, I can still go there early, but if I go there a little bit later, open a few more chests along my way and come across like four or five non emerald things I can throw some way somehow, I'm more protected against those fights. So that's why I just went at the Owsers and I was looting more chests as I went, just to grab more things to throw if I ever did get walled by a tough boss. Which you almost did. Uh, we, you did Owsers first, and uh, yeah. you know your your first hurdle was uh, dealing with those uh, those ninjas or outsiders, whichever ones they were, and they almost got you, but you stuck it out and um, ended up with a good chunk of experience for Realm, which really served you well uh, when you came up across Goddess, which. You know, you had low scaling at that point with uh, only one uh, progression check with one Esper. And, you know, cracking that shield and mimicking it took her out right away um, due to the extra levels that you had. Fitz did the same exact um, strategy, but had a struggle on those outsiders, and it took a couple extra attacks to bring Goddess down. So it puts you in the lead a little bit there just in that early section. Yeah, and, and the thing with that kind of shield, if she, if she does an AoE attack, I die. Um, I only have an ice shield, I only have ice shield protection. It's either going to be a water or a thunder attack. And that's basically going to kill me if, it, if that uh, if that comes out. So that that's why I just first turn cracked it and went for it. The ninjas actually don't give that as much experience as you think, unless they're paired with the the, uh, the third, the wiry dragon, wire dragon, whatever you want to call them. Um, they're kind of lackluster Ooh. in terms of how much experience you get. You don't get as much as you do, but you get a lot of ability points from them. Yeah, unfortunately, uh, one free Fitz uh, just got knocked down in Kefka 4. Um, did not go the way that he was planning and is going to possibly restart the climb, or is it no, going to be a forfeit? Oh, okay, unfortunately, it will be a forfeit this turn. Strago oh, doing that his is... desperation attack instead of actually doing the Valiant Knife, I think, cost him that entire fight right there. That's it did the one awful. time you don't want to see it. Oh, that is heartbreaking. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, it's definitely. Yeah, if he would have gotten the VK attacks off, I think he would have easily won that. But that's a bummer. Yeah. Yeah, that's one thing about Kefka. You know, even uh, you know, best laid plans sometimes Kefka or sometimes just plain old RNG. We'll just uh, we'll just cost you, you know. Mm -hmm. that, that one desperation attack is all it took to to end that fight. Yeah, yeah that's definitely true. Uh, let's see if we can get uh, fits in for any of you or not. Well, glue, we do uh, appreciate you having it in. That was an amazing showing, um, and yeah, we look forward to seeing some more from you and checking yeah. out some more races. I hope to be able to restream you some more. I appreciate yeah. you guys. Y'all have a good night. You, you as too. well. You take care. Yeah, take care. But yeah, uh, let's see if I can get Fitz in for an interview or not. Uh, do you want to see if Fitz, uh, what he, what Fitz thinks of this specific seed? Yeah, that was a really rough break. I don't, I don't think Fitz played that incorrectly. He certainly played it a little more. Uh, avant-garde or you know uh balls to the wall if you will versus playing and we it a are more safe but you're it's just sorry to kick you off. We, sorry we guys. are joined by we are joined by fits uh ggs and uh bad rng happened didn't it i mean yeah like what can i say it was uh i don't know it was an interesting one I'll, i'm gonna put this one behind me that's why we get to drop a couple uh <laughs> sometimes 
it just goes bad. Yeah, that's that's the whole thing. Is that, yeah, that whole saber soul aspiration attack instead of the uh, VK uh, attack that was gonna happen that you were planning on. Oh, that would have changed so much. But... Yeah, I mean overall, like I think there are good things that I'll take away from this. Like I played aggressively. I was going pretty fast early. I got kind of bogged down um, in the back half, but yeah, a bit then, of that Esper yeah. hunt. It looked like it was pretty difficult to find. Yeah, you know that last Esper you needed. Yeah. So, what are your thoughts on this seed in particular? Um, I feel like I fought almost all of the bad bosses. That was one of the interesting things. Was like. The path I took, I had Goddess, Poltergeist, Inferno, Doom, you know, all except no Magi Master, who I was really worried about, particularly when I climbed Fanatic's Tower, because I had no answer for that fool. And I was like, I just hope he's not up here. He did wasn't, you have, but... Did you have Berserk? No, I didn't have Berserk. Terra had Meteor, naturally, so... But she was at the tower, so that wouldn't have mattered. So yeah, I had, I had nothing anywhere else. I had throw, I would have been fine. But that was the one place where I was like, man, if he shows up here, man, it's like gonna be were, one of those days. There were a couple of vanilla trap chests. Um, uh, Narsh um, trap chest was presenter, which uh, drinks blue ran away from immediately. Uh, then there was the vanilla uh, uh, floaty continent chest, trap chest, and the there was a vanilla uh, uh, velt cave trap chest. So there was a couple of vanilla right there. It's weird. And I'm sure the uh, yeah. gigantos up in the floating continent was probably very welcome to see because I know uh, I'm fairly certain you were a little bit low on levels at that point um, due oh to how goodness. goddess happened. So I'm sure that gigantos was a breath, get, you know, really helped you out there. Well, it was like a twofer because like I I was like I'm gonna take my grind and get off level three in Ozer's mansion, which Realm did, but the ninjas took everyone else out. So it was like cool. And then, yeah, Goddess also was like, Realm Solo. That's probably the moment that I'm like the proudest of. Because I was like, oh, shoot. <laughs> uh, I didn't say shoot, but um, what am I going to do? And I was like, okay, well, I learned Ice 2 off this shield. So let's crack that, mimic it. I hope that gets it done. And then it didn't. <laughs> and that was like double shoot. Uh, and I had that Ice Rod and it was just enough, but... Like, that was definitely somewhere where if I would have messed around and tried to, like, dink it out, it wouldn't have happened. Um, yeah, it worked so. out well, and it definitely shows, you know, sort of the skill level between you and Glue in general is that both of you used the same strats, and it didn't really take much time for you to figure it out. You know, you saw Goddess, you're like, I already learned Ice too. throw that shield, mimic that shield, throw that rod, get out of here. A lot of other people at that level, you know, would be like, uh-oh, I'm dead. <laughs> this is over, I can't take her this early, but... You both knew that it was 100% doable with the items that you had. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, there, there was like you had, you got Terra, and uh, Drinkslow did not get Terra. Uh, went down the, uh, uh, went down the Ibbets Rock to get uh, Cyan, uh, and went through the Cyan route instead of uh, Fnatic's Tower. So a bit of a divergence there between you two. Yeah, interesting. Um, when I saw it, I had already gotten so many. I think I was at four or six when I saw Terra. And that was the first Strago check. So I was like, well, I can look. And if it's a character, let's do it. Um, but yeah, like, I think, like, overall, I was, like, pretty, pretty happy. I played aggressive. I was playing fast. And, like, Kefka just, like, sucks. And if you're, like, a new runner, like, it happens to everyone. Like, I really, I feel like I did everything in my tool belt. Like, Realm was so fast because she had a speed plus two Esper pretty much the whole game. And I had that life three and she had image. So I was like, okay, you know, like, I think she can just do this. As, and if I throw like one big thing, 
it'll take this fool out and you know it didn't happen i needed that extra just one hit from strago who just ultimately let me down wing. That double havoc wing, you know, we've all we've all had that happen to us where it's like, if he could just do something else, just do Revenger. Nope, double havoc wing. <laughs> yep, it we've was all been there. We've all been there where double havoc wing and then revives, you don't get to be able to do anything else and he just takes her out right afterwards. Yeah, that uh, that was fortunate. Yeah, so it's like you know, always tough to take the L, but I did have a good time, so that's a, that's a win. And that's the, imp the important thing is that you had fun, and uh, we're looking forward to uh, next week. Yep, so. for sure. I will forget this immediately and look ahead. Yeah, um, and I mean, you, you you know it, you know, but maybe some of our viewers don't. But you know, this is an eight week Ultros League, uh, and the top six finishes are the ones that count. So. You know, if you have a bad week here and there, you, you have two freebies, you know, so it's great to be able to move right right past it if uh, if a week goes bad and, you know, get back on it, kill it the following week. Yeah, uh, yeah, for sure. Um, any any uh, final thoughts before uh, we let you go? Um, yeah, I'll plug the, uh, you know, the Moogle, cu the Moogle Cub, our little new player oriented uh mentored many tournament uh i'll be a mentor in that so help you learn also i have a very high fun focus so like i think that's important for newbies too it's just like put in the effort have fun the times come down kind of as a bonus and and again even the vets have a day like today where it's just like, yeah, wanna happen. So move on to the next one. Yeah, uh, I'm also gonna be, be a mentor in this one. So you can learn under me too. I've had a few, uh, few students, so that's gonna I feel like I'm there. working my way up to that, but uh, I'm, I'm still kind of in the, in the learning phase myself. You know, I'm still looking to push toward Elixir um, and then uh, maybe start branching out you know, from there and start doing my own mentoring. So um, I think this uh, Moogle Cup is a fantastic thing that we're adding in here, you know. Uh, being able to pair up, you know, the pods of, I believe it's four, four players with one mentor, is that correct? Uh, yeah, I, I don't know how many players, each player or each runner will have at least one mentor. Some mentors might be doing double duty. I think Glue already reached out to me and told me, hey, I, I might have you do two, you know, uh, runners, which is totally fine. I have enough capacity to do that, and I think it'll be a really good time. I think it'll be a fun event. You can sign up now if you'd like. Uh, link in the chat for more information on the Mogul Cup, or uh, you can check out our Discord, and there is a channel dedicated to Mogul Cup with a link to a sign-up in case you are interested in joining this. Uh, we also have just a regular mentor program if you're interested in doing just a simple VOD review or somebody to uh, ride shotgun while you play a seed or something like that as well, if you don't necessarily want to do a scripted event or anything like that. So some some good things here that we certainly hope that newer runners will take advantage of. Absolutely. And I think uh, everybody in this chat at some point, maybe not you, Schwantz, um, I'm not sure, but I think <laughs> all of us have benefited from the mentorship program at some point. Uh, I definitely have um, with Glue and uh, uh, Golden Shocker. Um, any, but Fitz, did you do the, were you in the mentorship program before you yourself became a mentor? Um... I actually started mentoring in the our Moogle first tournament, the first like mentored event. I was actually on the line where I was like, I kind of feel like I could benefit from mentorship, but I signed up as a mentor. Um, so I've been doing it for a bit and, and I love it. And I love seeing all the new players getting up to speed. It makes me increase my, my game, so to speak. So. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, I think it's an, it's another it important. Yeah, yeah, and it's it's like another important thing to keep in mind is that this is the the straight up mentorship program is not just for novices. 
you know if, if you're brand new to the game fantastic but maybe you're at that just at the cusp of sub sub 90 or you're where i'm at where i'm really trying to cut down to sub 80 you know you can get tips from some of the best highest level players of this game that can really help you up your game no matter what level you're at so um i think it is just a wonderful program and you know if, if you want to improve that's that's where i would start yeah, definitely start with the mentors. They, they're they really, really nice to uh, learn from. They're very pleasant. This whole community is just so good. You know, I, you know join, join the uh, Discord, you know, um, check out the runners, follow, you know, follow, give, give a, uh, give a follow to our restream team, uh, give a follow, you know, re really, really friendly. We will mentor you. We will do all this stuff um, you know join we'll help you absolutely out. and you know while, while we're on the topic of uh following you know the, the these amazing runners that are here and restream team and all that uh just want to kind of slide in there you know uh when it comes to our youtube channel you know it's it's up and coming we post our vods there um anything you see on this channel is going to end up on that youtube channel so uh you know we, we've about 50% of the viewers are uh, currently subscribed, so if you're really interested in seeing this content and you don't want to have to catch it live every time, make sure you go over there and uh, subscribe to the FF6 Worlds Collide YouTube channel as well. Yeah, uh, do we have uh, anything else to say before we wrap this up? Anything else you want to chat about, Glue? Or Glue's not here, but Fitz? I mean, Fit yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, yep. Fitz. Oh my goodness. Well, what a note to go out on. I'm Fitz, <laughs> not Glue. <laughs> yes, you do. Signing off. I hope everyone has a wonderful evening. And I'll you catch as well. Later. Thanks again. <laughs> you take care. Yeah, you take care. Uh, I think we'll be wrapping up soon. Uh, who, are we rating anyone? Yeah, so I want to thank you guys, both uh, Goku and Physic Shebang, for doing commentary on uh, tonight's race. Really appreciate that. Uh, also want to shout out uh, Drinks Glue and Drinks Glue. I mean, one free fits uh, <laughs> for running in the race tonight. Can't have the races without the runners. So, uh, yeah, maybe we'll uh, we'll raid we'll raid over to uh, Organ Dude. Uh, Physics, uh, got anything else we want to chat about? No, I think that's that's about it for me. I just want to say, you know, thank you very much for you know putting this putting this whole thing on. You know, it, it takes the whole community to be able to run these restreams. You know, uh, a lot of people donating their time uh, for what I, what I see to be as a wonderful cause. You know, fantastic community, and you know, I just want to thank everybody for um, for taking the time to do this, and also for allowing me to participate as well. I, I really appreciate it. Yeah, we always like to help. Awesome. Well, thank you guys again so much, and uh, we'll catch you all on the next one. See you later now. Peace out. Take care. Take care.